Good evening! Welcome back to Star Citizen. We're back here at Invictus Launch Week, the Vision Center. Today, we're going to uh, see a couple of different manufacturers, including Roberts Space Industries, the in-game manufacturer that's named after the, the man who started this all, Chris Roberts. Um, <clears throat> the... Uh, yeah... The uh, show center has uh, several manufacturers today. RSI, which is Robert Space Industries, Consolidated Outland, Argo Astronautics, and Origin Jumpworks. Um, this is supposed to be a military show, so I am kind of interested to see what uh, what they're going to do with Argo and um, Origin. Origin, uh, for those who... Oh, I think I just stepped right out from where I was. Um, for those who are unaware of the reputations of all of these um, uh, companies, uh, Roberts Space Industries kind of... Yeah, there we go. Convention Hall. That was my mistake last time. Um, th uh, these are the reputations that these think guys have. Roberts Space Industries... Is the is sort of a generalized ship manufacturer. They make a lot of different. All right. Yes. 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 They make a lot of different ships for regular people, for military application, for all sorts of stuff. Ooh, nice. Nice. Okay. So what have we got in here? Looks like we got constellations in here, and yeah. Okay. Constellation Taurus, Andromeda, Aquila, and Phoenix. All four Constellation variants. These are all from RSI. RSI makes a lot of ships that are just sort of generalized. Um, and um, uh, and they, they, they make military hardware. They make regular ships for regular people. Origin makes ships that are luxury ships. So it looks like we don't have a lot of Origin ships here today. Just the 325A and the 125A. Uh, so those are, are their only military intended uh, application ships. Little interceptor ships. We have the Consolidated Outland Mustang Delta. Consolidated Outland is known for building ships that are for ordinary folk uh, and you know civilian use. Um, but they do have one Mustang variant that is... Uh, more geared towards militia uh, implementation. And then Argo is the industrial manufacturer. They make industrial ships. Uh, and they've got... Uh, is That looks like it's not quite the Argo Cargo. Uh, Argo Cargo got kind of popular because of its name and because of its uh, meme use. Okay. All right, so without further dismay, we will look at these ships. This is the Mantis. That's cool. Let's see if we uh, stop ships dead in their tracks with RSI's premier quantum enforcement ship. The Mantis features a tailor-made quantum enforcement device from Vitek, capable of ripping ships out of QT with its quantanium or quantum snare and preventing hasty escapes with its quantum dampener. So this ship is sort of a fighter, a light fighter, but it's a, it's an interdiction ship. It stops ships that are going to uh, that are that are in quantum travel, takes them out of quantum travel, and then um, the if there's other ships around, then they can uh, do whatever they're going to do. Check uh, investigate those ships for. Um, for piracy or whatever. That looks pretty cool. Or blow them out of the sky or, or use it or, uh, you know, do some piracy. So the Mantis, kind of a cool little ship. Um, not very heavily armed. So it's really only a threat to the light, uh, to small ships or to 
uh, cargo ships or merchant vessels that don't really have fighter escorts uh, by itself. But of course, with uh, a mantis ship, with a with a mantis around, you can easily um, get a group of people together to uh, uh, to jump uh, jump people come going through quantum space or I imagine the uh, police forces will be using them in universe to perform their searches and their seizures and stuff like that. This, this is the RSI Scorpius. The RSI Scorpius is a heavy fighter. Uh, so it's with an adaptable bi-wing configuration and revolutionary rail mounted remote turret the Scorpius offers unprecedented fire coverage, allowing for both defensive and assault-minded applications. Uh, it is, yeah, it's definitely a, a cool heavy fighter. It's got some big missiles in there. It's got a uh, a big turret on the top, and, uh, and that turret can move. It's on rails. It can move to the rear of the ship. Um, kind of hard to see. Maybe I'll be able to get in there and, and show you. Um, enter pilot seat. Pretty cool. All right. Boom. Uh, so we're not going to be able to uh, show you the wings <laughs> in this uh, setting, but the wings, when you uh, when you take off, you can stow the landing gear and the wings pop out in kind of an X-wing formation. Um, uh, I'm sorry, in the shape of an X. X-wing is, uh, is a trademarked sort of thing that obviously... This is not an X-Wing from Star Wars. No, no, no. This is definitely a Scorpius. The RSI Scorpius has wings that may form an, an X shape, but uh, it is not an X-Wing. All right. Glad we clarified that. <laughs> um, let's see. Do they allow us to... No, they don't really allow us to do anything with these ships. That's okay. Um, but you can kind of see that big track in the back where the um, that uh, that turret can move back to all right let's take a look so that that covers the fighters here we're gonna take a look downstairs Convention hall is so big. All right, this is the Aurora. Oh, that's that's cool. I usually put ground vehicles down here. The Aurora LN, the Aurora Legionnaire. This is a sort of uh, another militia kind of ship. The Aurora is a basic ship that you can get uh, one of the the entry level ships for the game. And the Aurora Legionnaire is the variant of it that is intended for combat. Um, it, it's not really a military light fighter, but it's a, it is a, a militia fighter. This is a ship with a bed and um, it, it has a lot more, it has a much bigger gas tank than most light fighters. So it is more appropriate for a person starting out. Uh, and less appropriate for a military. And then the, let's see, this is the Ursa Rover and the Ursa Rover. The Ursa Rover is a, ve a ground vehicle, very tough, lots of, it's got room for carrying soldiers, um, kind of a, a good mechanized infantry uh, vehicle. You can carry one, two, three, four, five, six people uh, can sit 
in the Ursa rover. Yeah, there we go. Get a little more light in here. Um, so, yeah, you can get a little mechanized infantry. That is a lot. Must be a, a, a tour group. <laughs> um, yeah, way cool. Let's look at the concept area where they have ships that haven't, they have ship designs that haven't really come out yet. And this is, come on, get out of the way. Argo Astronautics, the Argo SRV. When it comes to getting the job done, Argo doesn't mess around. From simple freight and cargo towing to harrowing search and rescue operations, the SRV handles whatever you can throw at it. The bespoke traction a tractor system utilizes an, an innovative plate and arm combination, allowing for effortless, effortless solo use as well as precision team towing for bigger jobs. Your crew and passengers stay safe too, thanks to the t durable shields and heavy-duty armor that keep the cockpit and components secure when the situation gets hairy. That's cool. That's going to be like a, a multi-purpose uh, tractor ship with a cool tractor beam. Very nice. I'm sure the, uh, the game will put those to great use once those are in. That's from Argo Astronautics. Argo, like I said, is a big industrial manufacturer. Ooh, yeah, this looks like the Polaris. Got a big gun on the front. Yeah. Nice big ship. There's always people at these things. All right, all right. RSI Perseus. Oh no, that's different. A gunship. When RSI set out to make the defin definitive modern statement in persuasive prevention, they looked into their own past to the historic gunships designated Perseus. Capable of shredding subcapital sub class goliaths, the mere presence of a Perseus gunship in a blockade or patrol squad is enough to make your most aggressive enemies think twice before engaging, just like its vintage namesake. I'm trying to use a different voice for every manufacturer so that you can get an idea uh, of what their personal what the the personalities of these uh, different things are like. Um, yeah, the Perseus, big gunship with some big guns. Okay. Oh, that has got to be the Polaris. You can see they're they're kind of the same shape, but the Polaris is. Uh, much bigger, which is hard to tell from these designs. And got some really big engines on this thing. That is a capital ship. I think it's a frigate. A Corvette. The Polaris is a nimble Corvette class capital ship that packs a powerful punch with a full armament of turrets and torpedoes intended for both use as a naval patrol ship and to serve as the flagship of militia operations polaris has the capacity to perform search and rescue operations light strike missions and general security patrols the, the polaris includes the facilities to repair rearm and refuel a single fighter light bomber or support ship okay so you could put a uh, a fighter or a light bomber in there um, that's pretty cool. Oh, that looks like a ground vehicle for sure. Much smaller, much more nimble than some of those other, uh, other things we just saw. Origin G12A. Ooh, a combat ground vehicle from Origin. The G12A combines military might with Origin's unique approach to high-end engineering. Designed for all offensive ground-based operations, is the ideal partner for long-range perimeter, perimeter patrols, intercepting assailants, and exploring dangerous new locales. Origin Jump Works. Yeah, those guys are fancy.
Pretty cool. All right. I'm going to take you aboard one of the constellations. Let's see. Let's take a look. The Phoenix is the uh, const the uh, the fancy one. Aquila is like the exploration one. The Taurus. The Taurus is the the big cargo one. You know, let's let's take a look at the uh, the Phoenix. So this is the Constellation Taurus. This room is much the same in all of them. It's got two turrets top and bottom. It's got a pilot, two support stations, room for more support stations uh, in the future once they start putting in uh, that sort of thing. Uh, it's got a bathroom. It's got a, a table that you can... If I can find the button for the table... Let's see. There is a button to deploy the table. I just... I forgot where it is. Oh. No, that's set. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember where it is. It's got bunks for four crew members. And then this one is a bit different from the others. It's got a very fancy lounge for some passengers uh, with uh, a bar and a meeting table. I think there's supposed to be a hot tub here and it's got two uh, small uh, bed uh, bedrooms and one big bedroom for your guests. Uh, so it can support three guests in comfort for long travels or quite a few more than that. Uh, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, at least six for for long for, for shorter term travels. Um, they won't all have beds though. And all of the um, all these uh, ships, all of the uh, the constellations have a snub fighter that's in the rear. This one's got the Archimedes. The Archimedes is way cool. It's it's a really cool snub fighter. I gotta admit. Um, so. Yeah. That's, that's what these are like. We're going to go down into the cargo area and just drop down. That's fine. All right. Now, in game, Robert Space Industries is one of the oldest space manufacturers, uh, is the oldest space manufacturer or, or spaceship manufacturer that's still in business, I believe. Um... And I can hear the commercial playing for the uh, for this ship, but I don't know where it is. Okay. All right. So that's the uh, constellation. Very cool ship. Um, it's one of the multi-crew ships that can be 
piloted by a solo pilot very well, um, but it, it can also accommodate a couple other other uh, people, players on board, and do very well with uh, with those people. All right, this is the Origin ships. Risks were meant to be taken, but why risk running out of fuel in the heat of battle? With the air fuel system, a souped-up weapons package, and the all the luxury and refinement you've come to respect expect from Origin Jumpworks, the 125A has been designed for the discerning Maverick. And this one's pretty cool. Just because it's a rough galaxy doesn't mean you need to sacrifice your comfort. The 325A can come out on top in any dogfight. The 325A features an advanced weapon payload as well as a custom targeting system designed especially for the 325A by Willsop. I'm, I'm going to rent that one. Yeah, let's take a look inside. Okay. And Okay. Hmm. How do I get inside your ship? Do I do it from the side? Open sesame. Open oats, open grain, open wheat. No. Hmm. I'm sure somebody in the comments will uh, tell me how foolish I'm being. It looks, I mean, it looks like there's a... Looks like this is the cargo door, and that's supposed to come down, but it's just not, it's not, um, it's not selecting properly. And this is usually the sign where we usually get in on the left side. Um, hmm, okay. Well, I can't take you inside that one, I guess. But this is what it's like inside an Origin vehicle. They've got... Uh, this one has a little cargo hold. See? Nice little, cute little cargo hold. Um, I totally recommend the Origin 100i or the 125a as starter ships. Those are great starter ships. They have a an internal uh, hold... Uh, where you can hold a little bit of cargo, they can do some fighting, they can do exploration, lots of different things. This is the Mustang Delta. Now, the Mustang is one of the starter ships along with the Aurora. And um, <clears throat> the Mustang has a lot of different variants. I do like the Mustang. Um even though it's got some big flaws for uh, a starter ship. Um, for one, there's no room inside the ship to put boxes or cargo or anything. It doesn't carry uh, anything, really. Uh, even though this, this ship does have... It's got four guns and it's got rockets. The rockets are fun. They're cool. They, they blow stuff up. Uh, it's got, you know, two size one shields, which is a lot more than, than some of the other ships in its class. It, it's a decent fighter, but it doesn't really do anything else. All right, and this is the Argo personnel carrier, right? Oh, yeah. You can carry a lot of personnel in, in this one. That's cool. 
Okay, I don't know why I can't get in that one. Okay, I'm trying to click on it. That one's not letting me click either, so maybe it's not just me. The Argo Astronautics MPUV 1P, commonly Argo personnel, this version of the Argo is geared towards a simple but incredibly important responsibility, moving grounds of people from place to place. The UEE Navy uses MPUV 1Ps extensively, and any new recruit can likely recall those terrifying moments in which such a ship carried them to their first space assignment. In civilian hands, Argo personnel ships are adapted for everything from standard taxi services to use as makeshift combat dropships. The Argo MPUV 1P is capable of carrying up to eight humans and their equipment. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, a very efficient little taxi. Uh, I'm sure the military uses them to ferry people around a lot in this game. And um, it'll be a perfect... Uh, a, a perfect ship to have for, for taxiing people around. One of the bad things about the MPUV is that it has no quantum drive. So you can only taxi people up from one place to another place that's very close by. Uh, you can't take them from, say, the planet to the moon um, because that would just take forever at standard um, driving speeds, which is what they... It's just the only thing that it can have. The only mode it has. Okay. Uh, that's all of the ships we've got. Maybe I'll go back to one of those constellations. We'll end on that note. That's all the ships they've got today. And that is... This is day four of Invictus Week. Uh, which is... Of course, Invictus Week is longer than a week, so it's kind of an awkward name for it. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, man, look at that. Look at that ceiling. That's a ceiling. That's not a skybox. That is the ceiling. That's great. Okay. Aquila. Right, you can see the Aquila has a very, very similar look to it here um, as the Phoenix, although it doesn't have the upgraded leather seats. I know you're very disappointed that, uh, that these seats are not leather seats. Come on, open. There we go. Uh, it has the same four bunks. Uh, only this one has, instead of a fancy um, passenger cabin, it has a big cargo space. And this is what most of them have in the center. Big cargo space with um, accessible components. And then we can get into... We're going to enter the upper turret. Boom. So you can see the upper turret kind of uh, pops out there. Um, the other, the turrets on the other ships are not popped out, but they do have them. They do have turrets right there at the, uh, right there, at, uh, right above the bridge. Um, this one's all popped out. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice big ship, big engines. Uh, for the long, great for the long haul, um, way cool ship. Okay. And, oh, okay. I was, I was worried for a moment that I wasn't going to be able to leave that seat. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
All right. And you can hear, probably very faint for you, but you can hear the uh, also Sprock Zarathustra song that they used for the commercials for this ship. I highly recommend looking at the commercials for, for these ships. Uh, Star Citizen is, has made com commercials for just about all of their in-game ships, and they're amazing. Oh, I was wondering why this elevator is above the ground, and that's because the treads are on level with this little platform, and so the elevator is on level with this platform, but it's not on level with the, the floor. That's interesting, but that's Star Citizen. It's, this is a very immersive game, and uh, it does a lot to, of attention to detail. All right, thank you very much for joining me uh, with, as we explore um, uh, Invictus Week. We'll finish by reading this last uh, sign. RSI honors Allo Plotworth, famous for patrolling along the Perry Line when it was introduced in the late tw uh, 2520s. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, 2520s. The RSI Perseus cuts a bold silhouette with its four m massive size 7 cannons. However, those cannons almost didn't make it onto the final design due to the intense internal stress placed on the struts created by all of them firing together. Tasked with solving the issue, it would be engineer Allo Platworth who would create a reinforced mount connector that was one and a half times stronger than the previous iterations. Many credit the Perseus presence on the front as a major deterrent during the Cold War, and Roberts Space Industries fully credits Allo Platworth for making the Perseus possible. <laughs> I don't know who if Allo Platworth is like one of the major backers in the game in real life, or if that's just a name they came up with for their lore team, but that's pretty awesome. I love it. All right, thank you very much. This has been Lance Vader. We, we've been taking the tour of Invictus Week for RSI Day and a couple of other manufacturers here as well. Uh, thank you very much. Please feel free to give me a like and a subscribe, and uh, we will sign off here.